Hey, what's going on? I've got to do a coolant flush on this 2012 Jetta uh, Sport Wagon TDI. And, you know, I've seen some videos out on YouTube. I was trying to find some info of people like disconnecting, like reaching Ray down in there and disconnecting that lower radiator hose and doing a coolant flush that way. But I noticed something in a humble mechanic video that he said just in passing. It wasn't the point of the video. And what he said is that this hose here at the top of your coolant tank that it's the return hose and that coolant is kind of always cycling through the system which is totally different than any other car i've worked on full disclosure i don't know very much about working on german cars at all i'm much more experienced with japanese cars and um, domestic u.s cars so i've never seen a system where the coolant is constantly pumping into the reservoir but he kind of mentioned again in passing, and I don't even remember what video it was on, that you could disconnect this hose. I've already moved the hose clamp back. You could disconnect this hose and then pump this into like a bucket as you're pouring in new coolant in here and it'll flush out. Basically, you'll be pumping out all the old stuff while you're pouring in the new stuff. And that's how you can do a really easy coolant flush. If that's true, this would be the easiest coolant flush out of any vehicle I've ever seen. So I don't know what I'm doing, but feel free to follow along and join me. So the system takes 2.2 gallons of coolant. I've got this Xurex uh, G40, um, which you can see Audi, Mercedes-Benz, VW, and Porsche on the back. It says it's compatible with uh, VW's 2005 and newer. So we're gonna go with this. And then I've, this is the concentrate. And we've got a gallon of distilled water to, to mix it with. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna use a turkey baster to get some of the fluid out of the reservoir so that I can compare this to what the new fluid looks like. So I just wanna kinda of see, you know, for science. Like, will I, is there a visual difference in how it looks so that I'll be able to tell when all of the coolant has been exchanged or am I just gonna have to go based off of capacity? Yeah, so I can definitely tell a difference. You know, the new coolant is on the left. It's like a bright pink. And the old coolant that's been in there for at least five years, probably around 40,000 miles minimum, uh, it's gotten more of an orange color to it. So yeah, it doesn't mean that it'll be that obvious when, even if everything goes to plan, because there's gonna be some mixing, but at least I know what to look for. This hose is held on to the coolant tank just by one hose clamp. It's a weird, these German hose clamps are different than any ones I've seen. Like the ears on them are like horizontal rather than being angled up a little bit. So they're really hard to squeeze together. There's probably some special tool or something. Um, so anyways, that took a little bit of fighting to slide that back. And once you slide it back off of here, you can disconnect the rubber hose. It was routed underneath this bracket. I just pulled it around and then I fed it into this clear uh, hose that I happen to have on hand from a different project. It's half inch ID and it didn't really fit. I had to actually take a step drill bit and drill out the inside a little bit for this hose to be able to fit. So if you're going to the store or if you're ordering a piece of hose, I would do three quarter inch ID. Um, I'll put a link to some hose that you can use. Uh, I got this stuff at Home Depot just for reference. And I just think having clear will be much better so you can see the fluid and maybe we can see like a color change. So here's what I've got. I've got that hose feeding into a clear um, container so I can see that and I've got another one on standby so that I can switch it when it starts to fill up. So the next thing you need to do is you need to find a way to block the, re the return nipple that was coming off the coolant tank or else as you fill up your funnel with the new coolant, it's just gonna come out of here. Now, a set of vacuum caps would be probably the easiest thing and I'll link to a set. And uh, But I forgot mine at the shop and I'm working from home tonight. So I just found an old piece of tubing that I had and attached it with like a worm drive clamp and then I've clamped it off with a set of vice grips. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so here's where we're at. We're ready to do this thing. Um, just to recap, we've got our original return line disconnected from the reservoir and fed into a clear tube. And we have a some way to block off the return nipple on the coolant uh, jar. And we've got a funnel. And then I did a quick test. I ran the engine for just a little bit. And our theory 
is sound so far. As you can see, it pumped out a little bit of old coolant. It comes out very, very slowly, which is good because this won't get away from us then. We can be adding in coolant without the reservoir running dry. We don't want it to run dry because we don't want to suck air into the system. So we always want to make sure that we're feeding in coolant as it's pumping out and that we don't let this suck in air. So I think with that, we're ready to do this. I've got my pre-mixed two gallons here of the new stuff. And so there's nothing left to do but turn on the car and try to do this. You can see it's coming out very slowly. All right, so we're done. That took quite a while to do. Um, one thing that I definitely messed up on is I started with a cold engine and you know, I wasn't thinking like, yo, where's the thermostat play into all of this? Of course, the thermostat is not gonna let half of the system's coolant come through in this system, I don't think. Maybe a little bit comes through it, but hardly any of it's gonna be closed, right? So start with a warm engine and you might even wanna have two people, have somebody on the throttle holding it at like 2,500 RPMs, keeping it hot so that thermostat can open more frequently. And that'll really help you exchange the coolant more efficiently. I, you might notice in the video that I was taking samples uh, from the hose and sometimes it was just coming out perfectly pink. So I knew it was brand new fluid. And then uh, I poured that back in so it could go through again. But what had happened was when I first started, it exchanged all of the old fluid that was on one half of the system. And, and then it was just going through the new stuff. It was just, I was kind of just adding to that close side of the system. And so then that's when I went inside the cab, got on the throttle, got the thing hot. And then that's when more of the old stuff that was on the other side of the thermostat came through. And you can kind of notice it also in the tube, you get like surges of coolant as that thermostat opened. So that's my experiment with doing a coolant flush on a 2012 uh, Jetta Sport Wagon uh, TDI. I've never seen a coolant system with this return, but I think it's pretty cool because that was the easiest coolant flush I've ever done in my entire life. No messing with radiator hoses or anything like that. Um, and as you can see, this first, gallon was much redder of the old stuff and then it started to get uh, pinker on the second gallon and by the third one i was getting pretty much perfectly pink fluid so i think it's good again my main takeaways are i think this system is sound i'm sure i'm not doing it 100 percent perfectly um, but i think the concept is sound and my biggest takeaway was start with a hot engine and have an assistant to hold the throttle at like 2,500 RPMs as you add in coolant and monitor what's old and what's new so you're not wasting coolant. All right, you guys, I hope that helped. I'll see you in the next one.